So the file note. It's the um, second, uh, sixth of the eleventh, twenty twenty, twelve thirty-three p.m. Coming to you live from the top of the South Island here in Nelson. Thanks for joining us wherever you're from. Gonna do a little bit more delving. Gonna go over the smorgasbord of truth again and the casting of spells and the spellings. Because there's more gas on this board of truth. So if you're joining me at the table, hopefully we can give you some food for thought. So a few things happening here in New Zealand, um, as those who might may or may not know. Uh, my Facebook page, oh, that's not very good light. Facebook page Norm Collins got taken down, it got deleted. Um, but you can still go to my YouTube page and check that out. Um, we've had lots of things happening, there's heaps of stuff going on. Okay, there's been a lot of people, a lot more talk about this sort of stuff, but the sovereignty. Okay, that's good. It's good to see people start waking up to it. Waking up to their own individuality, their own strength and their own power. And researching how to uh, exercise and express their trust. It's very interesting times indeed. Now, as you know, I like delving into the um, words and the language. And so, language is extremely powerful, as we may or may not know. Just going to try and get up a couple of things here for you to have a look at. So, whether you're there or not yet, um, that's my new Facebook page, Te Ariki Pauhiri Udamana. So, I'll be posting under that moniker, or cognomen. It was my Māori given name, um, I use it very rarely, but here we are due to Facebook's censorship, this is what we've got to put up with. So we're going to go over a few things today, um, again I'd just like to recognise recently we've had the uh, 28th of October with the um, commemoration, celebration of the declaration and proclamation of the independence of New Zealand of Nutrini actually, so I'd like to just recognise that, and also uh, yesterday of course we had the uh, Memorial of Parihaka, a tragedy in New Zealand history that not many people know about, again it's something you can go and look into, and of course we've had uh, and are ongoing here in, oh, in America at the moment, we have the elections, and so uh, Lots of people being charged up, because that's what electrons do, they charge us up. I'll let you guys um, stop the video at any stage and be able to read that for yourselves. Just, yeah, be aware that there are certain misgivings and misunderstandings here in New Zealand. We have the government corporation operating in the public. Tanga to Fenahapu operating in the private. So hopefully you guys can stop that and read that if you're interested. So those are the, about the two different worlds that we're operating in. The world of the living and the world of the dead. Which we'll go into a little bit. We've got to start standing up for a few of those. And understanding that what our human nature really is because human nature is neither inherently good nor inherently evil instead we should consider the operating conditions of the environment in which human beings exist which influences behavior to a great extent thus creating the current human condition okay we're in the state of elections at the moment we're all out there getting divided and conquered because that's pretty much all it is it's all about division and conquering. So we're going to go over a few more of the words we're going to delve into. Again, these are the two worlds that we're being 
operating in. This is where we want to be, on the land, in the world of the living, rather than the, in the world of the dead, where we're drowning in the sea. And it's all unfathomable. So there's lots of things going on. We've got the American elections. I think um, they've pretty much pronounced Trump's one, but there's all sorts of, you know, raru raru going on with regards to that. So um, I'm going to delve into a little bit of the language again. Going to some of the deceptions, because there's many deceptions out there. And the deceptions run deep. Unfortunately, we're all in a state of mind control. And we're being mind controlled through the language. It's a state of hypnotism. But people are waking up, starting to stand up, starting to realize, and starting to withdraw some of this, some of the consent. Because the cons have been sent in before there's been no testing of the cons. So it's good to see that uh, a bit of citizen journalism going on out there, where people starting to become the purveyors of truth by getting out there and doing it fantastic see love you guys people are awakening there is no doubt about it we know what awake is awake is a wave a wave is awake folks we want to be awake don't we we want to be we want to be voluminous full of liquidity in our little vessels getting a handle on things with good standing filling our own cups first quench your thirst first okay so i've changed a few things here on the board actually maybe from the last time i posted it posted a picture of it on my facebook page so you can get up there and uh check it out we'll go over a few of these things but just to give you a bit of a run round of it everything's about code Okay, it's all in code. Everything is in code, folks. And what we're going to learn to do is to de-sign, to descript, and to decipher. And to learn to raise our voices at their peak. To get the sound at its peak is to speak. There we go. And then we have volume again, don't we? When our sound is at its peak, it's voluminous we're allowed you see we're allowed when we speak okay now we've got to get into accordance with things we want to be in accord because we're in election time elections and electricity runs through cords it charges you up that's what's happening so i'm going to impart some more knowledge put you on a wee knoll that's on the edge of things so you can see farther and you can climb up another rung on the ladder of inner standing, outer standing and understandings. Don't be confused about understandings. There are certain things you do want to understand. And there are things you, you can never understand. For example, the language that's tied up into this particular book here. You'll never understand the language in this book here because it's legalese which, are, as I've said before, is like Chinese or Japanese or chimpanzees. It's an unintelligible language. That's what it is. This is a Charlie Brown one here. When my parents don't want me to know what they're talking about, they speak legalese. That's how it works. Now you see, this stuff here is unfathomable, okay? If you go and look it up, I should have brought that up actually. If you go and look up in the dictionary what legalese is, it'll tell you it's, it's legal jargon. And go look up the word jargon, it will tell you it's an unintelligible language, okay? It's an unintelligible language, so you'll never understand it. So you don't want to understand that. Comprehend it, yeah. Comprehend what's going on here. We need to do that. We want to get back to the simple things. If you're going to be booked, we get back to the simple things. Because it's pretty simple in the end. Unfortunately, they've got us all conscripted. 
into a corporation. Okay, a lot of talk about the sovereignship, sovereignty. Sovereignty is truth, folks. Plain and simple. Sovereign is a monarch, mon meaning one. Archon, ruler. A single ruler who rules only the kingdom of self. Sovereignty is a state in which one controls one's own thoughts, emotions and actions. And by bringing them into unity, con non-contradiction, non-duality, attains mastery of one's own consciousness. Self-control, self-mastery, self-ownership. Careful that word there, the ship. Self-realization is what it is, not a slave, okay? A lot of people talking about being sovereigns, but unfortunately, they're all running out there and voting and getting divided by the political system, which is what it is by design, folks. That's what it's there to do by design, okay? So we're going to go over a couple of other things here. We'll go through a bit of dialectics. Where's that one? Okay, sovereign, saw that one. Diagnosis, we're going to do a bit of diagnosis. That's from the Greek preposition, die, through, by way of. And the Greek noun, gnosis, meaning knowledge, by way of knowledge. And again, by way of knowledge, you raise yourselves up. And you're able to have higher comprehensions and greater understandings. See, unfortunately, as Noam Chomsky says it, the general population doesn't know what's happening. And it doesn't even know that it doesn't know. Because they're lacking in knowledge. And the system will never tell you. The system will never, ever tell you. They can't. Not directly. Of course, they'll always do it indirectly. Because they're directors in. They're in direction. You see, that's how that works. So your words are very powerful. But let your actions speak louder than words. It's like knowledge. Knowledge is power, sure. But actions. Your actions. Unless you're expressing your knowledge in your actions. And your acts then it's powerless, okay? Here's another aspect of things too. Because one of the beautiful things in life is that we've got two ears and one mouth. We've got two ears and one mouth, folks. That means to listen twice and speak once. That's our natural aspect. Aspect and our perspect and our respect. That's the way we should look at things. You know, when we start looking at things on the face value, it's pretty obvious what's going on. There's a mess age there, bit of a messy age. Maybe it's an error. What era are we in? We're in the era of division. Divide and conquer. It's, an, it's a mistake. It's a mistake and it's a bit decayed. Oh, we're in a decade, aren't we? Oh, no, that's a denomination. Decades are denominations, aren't they? Just like churches, as in Captain Kirk is the church, and he was the captain of the Enterprise, the Starship Enterprise, and Enterprise is a business, just like denominations are. They're denominations, they're a business, that's what they do. That's how they roll, folks. They tell you exactly what's going on. They have to. Let those that be deceived be deceived. Remember, I've said it to you before. The old Latin phrase, caveat emptor. The old Greeks would tell you, buyer beware. So if I tell you my car's worth 10 grand, you pay me and drive down the road and it shits itself. You bought the lemon, you're going to end up with a sour taste in your mouth. Now, the old Romans... No, because they, they, were, they were romantic, weren't they? they? You like to be romantic. You're all Roman here, Roman there. Hey, that's how that works. And they bone us. They like to give us a bonus, don't they? And their method. Is that myth? They're trying to OD us on something? They're trying to drug us, are they? Of course they are, folks. They got t they're telling you. Now, the old Romans, though, let those that be deceived be deceived. 
Mundus Volt de Sepi, de Sepi Tur Ergo. That's how it works, folks. That's just how it works. And unfortunately, you know, you guys think you've been taught English in school. It's a bastard language. It's called the language of the vulgar, in fact. And the English language, as I've taught you before, is an equivocal language. And the word equivocal is synonymous with duplicit, unclear, and vague. Exactly why the North Americans said that the white man speaks with forked tongue. It's by the nature of the language, folks. It's the basic tool for the manipulation of reality is the manipulation of words. If you can control the meaning of words, you can control the people who must use the words. And in that great book, of which there's many versions, in the beginning was the word. We all know words are sound vibrations, written with characters and sigils, in the form of letters, and that's called spelling. And we read them, and in past tense we're read, aren't we? To gain understanding, they have more power than you realise. Where are we? And here we go. This is um, from... I'm going to read this to you. It's a bit of a mouthful. So manipulating the masses is reality, folks, not cons piracy. Now, I've, done, I've gone, gone over cons piracy before. Cons, what are the cons? They're a bunch of criminals. What's piracy? It's rape, pillage, and plunder. It's the law of the sea. It's the law of the dead. Do you see? Indeed. It might be out of your depth, some of the stuff. It's a bit voluminous, mostly unfathomable. These are all the measures. Because we're drowning. We're drowning in the volume, folks. We're drowning in the volume because there's no assurance of me there. Because it's unfathomable, the volume. It's in fathoms. And it's leagues, isn't it? Isn't that the legacy? Is that the leg of the sea? The legacy? They must tell you what they're doing. Once you start deciphering, designing, and descripting the co, then you too can see. And then it'll be current. And then you can withdraw your consent and you'll be in accord. And currents run through a cord. Currents of the sea run through the cord. And then we have a chord dance. And we're at one. Or is that a tone? Or is that to you? We are tuned. We're atoned. We're enlightened. Through the knowledge, through the knowing, and the now. Because it's power, folks. It's all about power. And that's you. That's you, remember? The cup, the vessel that holds the liquidity. That holds the liquid, which is the blood. And it's red, folks. It's red because you write. And that's writing, which gives you the makes you the author of the right. Makes you the author of the right. Doesn't it? When it's read. And then we're allowed to speak in volume, aren't we? But watch out, because that blood can put you in a cell, folks. Because remember, where are we? Time in a cell. It's time in a cell. Oh, here we go. To surrender. To your surety, they're rendering your surety. You see that? That's how they've got to tell you what they're doing. And once you learn to dispel the, the spells that are being cast and the words which are wards, which are constructs, which are contracts, which cause you to be cold. You know, contractions are cold. When you when when liquid, when water contracts, it freezes. And then you're in fear, aren't you, when you're frozen? You're frozen in fear because you don't comprehend what's going on because your eyes have been blinded by the real lies. It's time to open your real eyes, folks, and realise you're not alone. Oh, yes, we are. See, this is how it goes. So they've got you in a cell. 
they've incorporated um, they conscript actually they conscript you see it's all scripture it's all the scripture folks and you've been caught you get caught there you see because it's the magi straight because it's straight out magic that's what he's telling you and summons they summons in the person they summons in the person do you know what a person is are you a good person Usually when I do a workshop, people put their hands up and say, yeah, I'm a good person. So you've just contracted yourself. You've just conscripted yourself on board. You've enlisted yourself on board the ship, the ship of state, the state of mind, the state of mind control. See, you're on board. You're on board the ship of state. Ship meant. Ship meant shipping your mind. Meant is mind. Realize that mint is always mind. That's why we have words like entertain mint, enter to attain your mind. Once you start to decipher and decode these words, you you will see that they're telling you exactly what's going on, exactly what they're going to do to you. In fact, what they've done, what they're doing, and what they're going to do. It's always a triune. It's always the triune because it's the cost, the value, and the worth. But that's up to you. That's up to you to assure. I can assure me with these things, but I can't assure you. And again, then as I say to you, cave your emptor, that cave your emptor, folks, that applies to me as well. You know, don't believe anything I'm telling you. You know, who am I? I'm no expert on anything. I know nothing. In fact, I'm still learning. I'm just a little student out here. But my, my gig here is because that I see a lot of people around me are blind. They think they see, they think their eyes are open, they think they comprehend what's going on, but unfortunately, they're lost, they're a bit lost. They're, they, they comprehend something's wrong, there's something not quite right. I just can't quite put my finger on it. I just can't quite put my finger on it. Just can't quite put my finger on it sometimes. So that's what's going on. I think most people who arrive at the table for a little bit of food for thought comprehend these things to a certain degree. But even myself, myself, I've got to author, I've got to author this stuff for me. I've got to put it on a board. Sometimes I get bored and I need to write things because it puts it in the visual. And visual is 60% of communication, folks if not more. So when you visualize things, it's visual in your eyes. It becomes um, solidified, doesn't it? It becomes solidified. It doesn't advert your eyes like the advertisements do, who try to enter to attain your mind. Intel. Intel, I gent. The intel. The intel I generate, if you like. See, I like playing with words, because words to me are magic. They're incredible, credible things. They can kill you in a minute. Or they can set you free in a second. And that's not to be second or minute in your timey, as you watch, in your third party. See, the thing about a watch is it's third party. It's always outside yourself. It's never now. When you watch, and it ties me, tie me to this and tie me to that, because you have an appointment, don't you, a point of your mind, and so you make plans, and you plan and you map, you know the funny thing about mapping and planning things folks, that's how you make God laugh, tell him your plans. Tell them what you want, because you are the wanting, are you not? Or have you learnt about sovereignty? Have you learnt about what it is to be sovereign in your mind? Because if you don't mind, it won't matter. Unfortunately, they've got us running around, the majority of us, running around in a state of mind control, because that's what government is. Govern, derived from the Latin verb guvernero and guvernare meaning to control. The Latin noun mens, mentist, 
is meaning mind. Government, folks, is mind control. So they tell you what they're doing. And here's another one you'll like. See, because governments don't want well-informed, well-educated people capable of critical thinking. That is against their interest. They want obedient workers, people who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork, and just dumb enough to passively accept it. Now, here, our word parliament it means speaking. It's a French word, means speaking lies, or to speak, actually. Parleur means to speak, and mentir in the French language is lies. So you have, you have a bunch of mind controllers. You have a bunch of mind controllers operating out of a house of lies, folks. That's, you know, that's how blatantly obvious it is that they've got to tell you what they're doing. It's a maxim of the universe. If I tell you I'm coming round to your house, I'm going to eat all the food in your fridge, I'm going to park up and watch your TV for a while, I'm going to load all your valuables into my car, into your car, and drive off down the road, and you do nothing about it because the language is so flowery or so nebulous or the narrative is so strong or the propaganda is in your face. That's what news is, folks. It's propaganda. It's so in your face that you're not going to comprehend what's going on. And you're going, oh, well, I think there's something wrong. Something's not quite right here. You know, left standing there in your stupor. That's how it works. They've got to. They've got to tell you what they're doing. Now, lawyers, lawyers, actually, let me, let me move on to that for a second. Oh, wait a minute. Got two computers going here. Um, this is a very interesting um, thing about talking. Actually, what was I? I don't want to get sidetracked there because it's easy to get sidetracked here. Where were we? Um, now, as I've said to you folks before, I'm not a religious man. Because religion, re, in the English language, is to do again. Um, I'm just trying to find... Oh, here we go. With regards to lawyers, folks. And the law, and the grammarians. See, lawyers were originally called grammarians. And grammarians, grammarians comes from two words. It comes from two words, gram and to ma. Gram is the measure of weight, okay? So that's where we get the scales of justice. That's where we get the scales of justice from. And to ma is to confuse. Again, they tell you exactly what's going on, folks. They've got to. Because if I tell you again those things and you do nothing about it, then you have, you have consented. You've consented. You've bought the consent. There's been no test of the consent, so there's no contest. And what you've done is conscripted yourself and enlisted yourself on board. You're on board the Dead Sea vessel in the world of the fiction, in the world of the persona, in the world of the corporations, the corpse that are orating. A corpse is a dead entity. Oration is to speak. Again, this is Latin in front of your face telling you what is going on. But they'll call it another name. They'll call it company. Oh, we all love company, don't we? We love to have a company. Well, I'll tell you what you knew. A company, you folks need to, you need to grow up. You really need to grow up, folks. Hey. You really need to grow up. And that's what being sovereign is, folks. It's sovereign is, is about growing up. It's, it's, it's not getting on anyone's walker. You can't get on anyone's walker. Because then, you know, you're being represent you're being present, represented in this world, on this dead vessel, this dead entity, fictional. That's what it is. That's what they do. No, that's what you do, actually. And that's another thing. People always come to me and say, oh, well, how can they do that to us? Why can they do that to us? Oh, the evil bastards. No, no, folks. No, it's not. Go and have a look at you. Go and have a look at your little vessel. Have you got a handle on things? Are you on good standing? Is it your passing of age? Is it your passing of age? 
Or is that a verse? Is that a passage? Is that a verse? Is that your entry? Or maybe you're an expert. I'm not an expert, like I said. I ain't no expert on here. I'll tell you why I'm not an expert. Let's have a look at the definition. Saucily free and forward, flippantly cocky and assured. That's what pert means. And when you're ex, you're out. Okay? That's what they tell you. They've got to tell you what they're doing. They've got to, folks. Now, where was I? We'll get back to that. Not that one. Not that one. Where are we? Sorry about this. Oh, here we go. We'll get on to this one again. Because this was about the grammarians and the weights and the measures. The measures to assure me. They can't assure you, folks. That they work on your presumption and assumption. You've seen those words, assume, make an ass of you and me, we know that. Presume is to, to, to previously do the same thing. Sue me, eh? That's how it works. Um... Right, we'll go over this. So, there is a stain, this is from, um, it's called Vermin by Paul Harvey. And it's um, to do with the colonies, early days of America. But anyway, it, it has a good, um, a good underlying um, platform for us to be able to gauge things on. Let's put it that way. So, if, if there is a stain on the record of our forefathers, a dark hour in the earliest history of American colonies, it would be the hanging of the witches at Salem. But that was a pinpoint in place and time, a brief lapse into hysteria. For the most part, our 7th century colonists were scrupulously fair, even in fear. There was one group of people they feared with reason, a society, you might say, whose often insidious craft had claimed a multitude of victims ever since the Middle Ages in Europe. One group of people were hated and feared from Massachusetts Bay to Virginia, the magistrate would not burn them at the stake, although surely a great many of the colonists would have surely recommended such a solution. Our forefathers were baffled by them. In the first place, where did they come from? Of all who sailed from England to Plymouth in 1620, not one of them was aboard. Vermin. That's what the colonists called them. Parasites who fed on human misery, spreading sorrow and confusion wherever they went. Destructive, they were called. And still, they were permitted to coexist with the, with the colonists. For a while, anyway. Of course, there were colonial laws prohibiting the practice of their infamous craft. Somehow, a way was always found around all those laws. In 1641, Massachusetts Bay Colony took a novel approach to the problem. The governors attempted to starve the devils out of existence through economic exclusion. They were denied wages, and thereby it was hoped they would perish. Four years later, Virginia followed the example of Massachusetts Bay, and for a while it seemed that the dilemma had been resolved. It had not. Somehow the parasites managed to survive, and the mere me nearness of them made the colonists' skin crawl. In 1658, the, in Virginia, the final solution, banishment and exile. The treacherous ones were cast out of the colony, at last, after decades of enduring the psychological gloom, the sun came out and the birds sang, and all was right in the world. And the elation continued for a generation. Now, I'm not sure why the Virginians eventually allowed the outcasts to return, but they did. In 1680, 22 years, the despised ones were readmitted to the colony on the condition that they would be subjected to the strictest surveillance. How soon we forget. For indeed, over the next half century or so, the imposed restrictions were slowly, quietly swept away, and those, who those whose treachery had been feared since the Middle Ages ultimately took their place in society. You see, the vermin that once infested colonial America, the parasites who preyed on the misfortunes of their neighbours until finally they were officially banished from Virginia, those dreaded, despised outcasts, masters of confusion, were lawyers folks. They were lawyers. The grammarians, the ones there who are put in place to trip you up on the bar and to confuse the scales of justice. And that's what's going on. 
They tell you what they're doing, they have to. This is another thing we have to do, folks. And that's all I'm doing. And that's all we need you to do. And that's all you can do. All the shit that's going on out in the world, you can sit back and watch it. And that's all it is, watch shit. That's what you got to do. That's how it works, folks. It's pretty simple stuff. It's not hard. Now I say, I'm not a religious man. Because religion means to bind. Legion. Legion is bind or bound. But the good book. Ah, oh, the good book, they say. The holy book. Let's go to a couple of other things that are in that good book. What was I looking at? Oh, yeah. Here's, here, you know, here's, here's another example about the the... The the book of the living, if you like, and the book of the dead. Okay, it's it's very obvious to see what's going on when you open your eyes. And there's certain um, parables within the Bible, of course, that give us a bit of a a bit of an inkling or an eye into these things. So this is Revelation 10. It starts, and I saw another almighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. He had in his hand a little book open, and he sat his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. What do you think's being said there? What do you think's being said there? Okay, you can go and read the rest of that, but he's talking about the two books, the two worlds. And this is what this Bible's about, man. It's about raising the dead. It's about bringing you back into the world of the living. And that's your real estate, folks. That's the land. We're made of the dust. We shall return to the dust. That's your real estate. It's on the land. That's why we're together to get her. It's Papa Tuanuku. Bit ironic, isn't it? When we're on the land and, and we're on the we're on the knoll, on the edge of the knoll, on knowledge, we can see farther, but we're on Papa Tuanuku. <laughs> to get her. Invoice. Not over here where we've got to be ill. See, this is over in the world of the dead, they get you to be ill. They have they have the ability to lie over here. It's the ability to lie. Over here. We have responsibility. Where's it gone? We have responsibility. The ability to respond. To be able to do that, we must be knowledgeable. And we must learn. And that's to each of and their own ship. That's to each and their ownership. To each. See how that works? And if you intuit it, you'll be into it, won't you? Of course you will into it and you'll get less on less on your plate how's it less on your plate norm wow well, it's pretty simple guys the more understandings overstandings and understandings you have the less is on your plate to concern yourself with because you can see farther and you've got to earn your lesson that's why it's learn folks it's pretty simple stuff You want to take control of your ship estate. Not be in a state of hypnotism or this mind control shit that's going on. Because you're all spellbound. You're bound by the spellings. It's called cursive. It's a cursive language when you when you connect them all. Don't you? It's called cursive. Oh, that's not ideal. That's what they deal in. Illus. Illusion. Illus. Ion. Ion is the quest. Has to do with the quest you're on, folks. Ions, energy, power, photons, protons, neutrons, electrons, questions. That's what gets you there. See, because as soon as the quest, as soon as you recognise the quest is ion, and you then you're as king. You're asking. You're as kings and queens, of course, because God made man, didn't he? He made man. And woman is the womb of man, and that's mankind. And that's to kindle, and that's the family. And this is all relative. It's all relative, isn't it? 
You've got relatives? Oh, yeah, it's all relative, Norm. Because we want to be asking. Asking the quest I on. That's how it works. And sometimes these things will bring you insight. You know, they'll incite things. But that will lead to that. Some, sometimes insight leads back to that. But ultimately, it's all knowledge. And that's raising you. That's raising you on a higher level to be able to comprehend more. And that in and of itself, that in and of itself puts you at a vibrational open level for more downloads to come in. You've got to sit in silence and, and go into the forest for rest. That's why it's that's why it's called a forest, folks. It's for your rest. You don't want to you don't want to arrest. You don't want to be arrested, but you want to go there for rest, and then you'll be you'll get relief if you branch out, and you might twig on a few different things and find out where your roots are really grounded. Because then you're back on the land. We're back on Papatuanuku. Back in the land of the living, and the lawful, where we have rights. See, here's another thing about rights too I want to just um, relay to you. Rights, you know, I own rights. I have rights. They are mine. No, they're not. No, they're not. I don't own them. In fact, the only thing I own, the only thing I have is obligations. Rights infer obligations. And with obligations, that's the ability to respond. That's a responsibility. That's how that works. It's pretty simple stuff. All this stuff is connected. It, it, it's, it's a phase. This is a phase. Although the, although the, you know, the question, the, the QE2, the Queen Elizabeth, that's a dynasty. That's a dynasty. See that? That's a dynasty, they call that. And they reign, don't they? They reign. They reign. Actually, they drain. They more like drain your cup, actually. That's why you become insolvent. That they are they are liquidating you. You're becoming bank ruptured. Your banks have rupted and you're you're losing liquid, liquidity, value, worth, and power. And this whole system's designed to do that, folks. It's designed to disempower you, to divide you, to create a vibrational anxiety. Because unfortunately, we think we communicate with each other. But when we're using a bastardized language that's so full of pit holes and divisions and misconceptions and misunderstandings, <laughs> good luck. Good luck. You know, many, many wise councils would sit in silence and speak very rarely. Because they, they knew it was a messy age. They knew that things, there was lots of confuse, lots of cons being fused out there. See, that's what they do. They fuse the con. They con the fuse. They put it on the table. They put it on the cons table. And he'll come round here once he's caught you with a war rant. He'll be war ranting about war. He'll charge you up. It'll be a contract on the constable where they confuse in the construction of the conspiracy and their T's and C's, their terms and conditions. Oh no, it's tracking and control. That's trackings and controls, people. They just, you know, it's just a wee word play there. It doesn't mean much. <laughs> doesn't mean much, eh? What do you mean? See, there's another, there's another denigrating word. What do you mean, folks? Are you mean? Oh, you're the general population, aren't you? You're in the army. You're a general in the army. You've been conscripted and enlisted. See, you're in the military, aren't you? You're the general public. And that's the use of you all. That's the usual, isn't it? And that's mean. That's the mean population. Aren't you the mean public? The general public's the mean public, isn't it? See, that's how they do it. See, that's how they do it, folks. It's very impressive how they do it. Because it's, it's all about the news that they anchor. And that's cast, just like the spells are cast. They're cast, and we're all in a cast, aren't we? We're all cast into a cast. And what's a cast called, folks? Do you know what a cast is called? A cast is called a die. 
Funny that, eh? Funny that. A cast is called a die. How does that work? Wonder how that works. And that's where I'm at. You know, I mean, this stuff, this stuff for me is so obvious. It's so in your face. But not many people are being vigilant and asking why. You know, you all think, oh, here's a good one for you. Where do I have that one? Where are we? Oh, no, this one, this one. You all think, Um, no, it's not the one I was after, but that was a good one. Oh, no, oh, I've lost it. I've lost it. Whoever actually said I even had it in the first place. <laughs> hey, I said so, get a few people there. Sorry, I, I get a bit lost in my own uh, diatribe. Says nothing, diatribe, by, by through, through by way of the tribe. Dire, meaning the Greek dire, through by way of, that's a diatribe. And a dialogue. So we're having a dialogue. A log is a logarithm, which is the truth, which is a numbers game. You see, it's always a numbers game. And it's all about the ancestry. See, that's the ancestry coming into play there. The old dialogue and the old logarithms, because that's numbers, folks. You can't be fooled by the numbers, because it's a numbers game. And if they don't add up, they won't add up. Which I'm not sure how long I've been going. Maybe about an hour. Ah, Tanga Defender Brother. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Anytime. In fact, I'm very selfish with regards to my mahi because um, in, 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 in regards to um, my, my motivations, if you like, because if I'm walking around with, uh, around other people who are uninformed, unenlightened, unaware, then that's a threat to me. That's a threat to my freedom. That's a threat to my um, my abilities and responsibilities. It threatens me. So I'm being very selfish by sharing this stuff. And again, it's the smorgasbord. So you can pick and choose whatever you intuit. Well, if it's intuit, if it sounds good, or if it rings true, if you can hear it through the volume of the hearing, through the leagues, through the legacy of the casting of the spells of the phonics, because it's the Phoenicians, it's the Phoenicians, the sea-bearing race, the phony Phoenicians and their phonics, they tell you exactly what's going on. So this is, <laughs> this is what's going on. <laughs> And conviction, you want to have conviction about things, don't you? Give your testimony and have your hearing and plea and objections and the passing of your age, your testimony. Because that's when you cross the bar, you enter the dock, you've been doctored. That's how they do it. They doctor you. You're being doctored, folks. You're being indoctrinated, in fact. And they always get you to fill out your document. They dock your mind, they dock your ship. Your ship is your mind, your vessel, your vessel. What you put into it will either fill your cup or it'll empty it or drain you. Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff and, and the operating mechanisms by which we've been um, programmed keep us in a state of non-clarity. They keep us in muddy water, folks, on purpose. It's by design. But again, once you start to learn to de-sign, decipher, and de-script and put some wind in your sails and get your sails at their peak, so, so because your vessel, when your vessel's got no wind, if you're a sailor, and we all like a good sail, don't we? We like to sail by and by sail, don't we? We all like a good sail and we wave, we wave as we buy, and it's a good buy. Funny that. Not really, it's just exactly telling you exactly what's going on. So, you know, when you've got no sound, you've got no wind in your in your vocal cords, in your chord dance. You, you, maybe your chord is maybe it's an chord. Maybe it's an chord, eh? Maybe you need to need to pull those anchors loose. 
and get in a core dance, maybe. So you're dead in the water. So that's a lull. It's a lull in the water. The Lucifer. The cipher. The lull of the cipher. Because it's cursive. And it's spelling. And it's being cast onto the dead. Because it's a die. That's how it's done. But you see, through the energy of thought and the words and the power, they charge you up. They give you a charge. You know, your old magistrate, straight out magic, he's sitting on the bench. Bench being a Latin word, it means bank. He works for the bank. You don't care who's paying. Someone's paying. You're always in pain, folks. You're always paying. Hey, and who are they? It's a tax. See, it's a tax. They tax you. And we're all agreed. You see that? We're all greedy. We all love being taxed, a tax, because it's called inland revenue. They revenue the land and put it on the sea. Do you see? They document you, put you in form, get you to fill out your form so that you're in form. Is that one uniform? Do you see how they divide and conquer? And they'll tell you all the news. And it's new, isn't it? Oh, it sounds so good. Oh, it's new. Oh, I've got something new. The news. The news is just a, the, the kings in the old days. He would send a rider out to the north, a rider out to the east, a rider out to the west, and a rider out to the south. And he would bring back the news. Whether it was newsworthy is a, is a whole different ball game. You get a lot of your news off this thing called the monitor. See, these things are monitors that have programmed. Programs and monitor you. <laughs> they tell you exactly what they're doing. They've got to tell you exactly what they're doing, folks. See, so, so we need information to be information. And that means in and of ourselves. We don't, we don't want to be format, do we? We don't want to be format. They like to format that and add minister, don't they? They like to add the minister. Oh, there isn't? Yeah. They add the minister. Oh, it's all religious. This is all speaking in tongues, of course. You realise that. So you're all, you're all religious. You're out right there voting for the minister and the electrons. And you go to the cathedral, which is the cathode, because it's sound, isn't it? It's church. It's kirk. That's, what, that's how it works. Again, that's how it works. An ideal, it's ideal. <laughs> and then they, then they, once you've filled out your form, they document you and you've got to submit, don't you? You submit, you surrender, you render your service and, and they give you time in a pen. You see how that works? Timey in a pen. Because they've summoned the person. They've risen the dead. They've given the living entity, the, the liquidity, the value, the unfathomable value. They've given it a dead entity and they're going to charge you up. They're going to charge you up real good. They're going to charge you up and you'll say, oh, fine. And then they'll ticket you and then they section you in the dock. Section. Section's a paddock, folks. It's a paddock. They section you in the document. Your ship's in the dock, you're parked, you're open for salvage. You're booked at the bar. That's how that works. You see, they charge you up, and that's a current. The current is a charge, which is an arc. And that, that creates a spark, doesn't it? It's a spark, that arc. And the arc is a frequency. Frequencies are arcs, arcs electricity, it's frequency. It all travels through a consent. You see that works? It all tra travels through a consent, a record, an accord, an anchord. It's electric. It's consent. You're consenting. And it hurts, folks. It hurts because that frequency is measured in waves. And you think you're awake. You're drowning. That's why it hurts. You're drowning in the volume because it's unfathomable. It's measured in fathoms. Do you hear? It's, it's symbols. It's symbolized. 
It's um, it's it's the core's been wrecked. Oh, is it correct? Oh no, maybe the core's been a bit wrecked, or maybe it's been rectified. Because it's it becomes solidified, eh? Remember that? And that's how it works for me. I can see, I can see the spellings that are here and right in front of your face once you solidif solidify them. And don't let things advert your eyes in their programs of enter to attain your mind called entertainment, to distract you and destruct you and to to lead you from the path of righteousness. <laughs> That's actually what lawyers are. The lawyers, lawyers in America are also called solicitors, folks. To solicit. To solicit is also prostitution. See, they tell you what they're doing. They've got to tell you what they're doing. Let those that be deceived be deceived. Now, if I use lovely little fairy words and, you know, lots of things that you think you can decipher and translate yourself, but your decipherment and your translations are so far removed from the actuality of what it is that's being conveyed and expressed, then you're going to be deceived. And you're not going to, and you're going to be in that place of, oh, there's something going on, but I can't quite figure it out. That's where you're going to be, folks. You know, these <laughs> these out there, your elections and your democracy. Why do you think the Founding Fathers were so vehemently against democracy, folks? Why do you think that? Why do you think that these very intelligent, extremely wise men were vehemently against democracy? And that's pretty much why. Hey. And old Winston, old Sir Winston Churchill, he had a few clues, didn't he? The best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. Now, even Ben Franklin, he had a few ideas on it too. You know, seriously, folks, we're being played by fiddles. And while you guys are all, all out there being deceived and decepted and misguided and, and, and you know, marginalised and subjugated and, and <laughs> raped, pillaged and plundered, you're stopping me from having my freedom. You're inhibiting me, because while my brothers and sisters are out there floundering round in deep water, I can't sit comfortably on the shore and bake in the sun or go fishing or whatever it is I want to do. While my brothers and sisters out there are drowning, I have the ability to be able to respond, as do you. If you've got any value worth, no matter what it costs, and I can assure you that that is your freedom. And that is the only way you're going to be free. Whatever definition of free you have. <laughs> Again, again, this is this is another layer of the deceptiveness of the language. See, I can use words with the intents and definitions and translations that I project in, but how you receive them, I, I have no control over that. I have absolutely no control over how you, whether you find this messy age offensive. Maybe it will incite you. Maybe it will incite you. Maybe it will incite you. Maybe my message will. Maybe it gets lost in the confusion of the, the, the fuse, the con of the fuse again. Actually, I'm starting to get a raspy voice, so I might just about sign off here. So, um, actually, there was a few other things I wanted to cover, but I think I've been going on a little bit too long now. As I say, I'm not a religious man, but... Um, what was I doing on that one? As I saw 24-2, and it shall be, as with the people, so with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, as with the maid, so with her mistress, as with the buyer, so with the seller, as with the lender, so with the borrower, as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. Usury, folks. Check it out. Teething. Don't tithing. Oh, no, it's tithing. Oh, that's tithing, Norm. <laughs> Teething's painful too, isn't it? What else did I want to cover? Ah, uh, the cognomen. I did want to go over the cognomen, but these cogs take a few more gears to get rattling those ones. So there's my um, new Facebook handle. 
um, check me out there also I'm trying to build up my um, subscribers for me not the norm page so if you can check that out make sure I'll spin you around so you can see me see me ugly mug so there you are um, so thanks for joining us guys um, that was my Facebook page that was my little rant for the day uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and I do this again to raise you at higher levels of comprehension knowledge and understanding so that you can grow and then and then it's like for me it's like planting a seed because now you you little lovelies out there will take parts of this information and you will go and find other aspects of it and you will bring those back to me you see so that's how it's that's how it's selfish i'm very selfish in that respect so yeah so thanks guys thanks for joining us love and light you guys have a great weekend be safe and um i'll try and get back on as soon as i can love and light tears thank you